What is up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another edition of Morning Crypto and Coffee. It's hot as hell. Hope you're having a great day today. Today, Thursday, August 22nd, 2019. The crypto market is a little green. It's not a lot of green, but it's a little green. Bitcoin, though, still down in the 24 hours. A third of a percent. Ripple's up almost 2%. Ethereum, 1%. Bitcoin Cash, almost half a percent. Litecoin, almost 1%. Top 10 cryptos mostly in the green, but over the past seven days, 14 days, still in the red. Put a little bit of uh, cinnamon in my coffee today per the digital asset investor. Always talking about putting cinnamon in his coffee. I put some cinnamon in my coffee today. Pretty dang good. If you have not had cinnamon in your coffee, I would highly suggest that you try it. Um, anyways, so yeah, top 10 coins pretty much in the green today. Total market cap sitting at about $264 billion. Bitcoin dominance still way up there, 68%, almost 70% dominance over the market. Crazy, crazy times that we're living in, guys. So crazy. I mean, just going over the news this morning, so many interesting things going on around the world. It's just the pressure in the pressure cooker has just, it, 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 it's at its peak, it's at its maximum capacity of pressure. And it's just something has got to give. What is it going to be? There are so many variables. In America, you've got the housing market. You've got the you've got the real economic numbers. You've got the the poor getting poorer. The the middle class are becoming poorer. The rich are getting richer. Man, the Dow Jones still. I mean, it is still fighting, still being manipulated. Big banks still investing. They're all just investing against themselves, guys. And if you're looking at the, uh, the equities market as a barometer for the economy in the United States, I think you should probably get some better metrics. I'll go, go out on the street and ask 100 people. Go ask 100 people if they're better off now financially than they were in 2007, 2008. I bet I, I'm gonna, in fact, I'm gonna make a video where I'm gonna do that. Okay, a couple of things that are really affecting the worldwide economic. Number one is China and the Yuan. Okay, they are de the, the Chinese Yuan fell to a fresh 11 year low on Thursday amid worries about the deepening. Sino US trade war despite support from major state owned banks in both the spot and forwards markets. Spot Yuan ended the domestic session down 0.34% at 7.0875 cents per dollar, its weakest such close since March 14, 2008. This is a big deal, guys. This trade war that's going on, it is, it's so far from over. They're so far from a resolution happening. And the real, uh, I mean, the, the real World War III is a trade war. This is the power struggle between the East and the West. And I mean, Ray Dalio talks about it, this a lot in his book about cycles, debt cycles, economic cycles, is when one empire is coming into power and one empire is going out of power. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now is we are seeing China rise as a international political and economic powerhouse. And we're seeing the United States 
lose its grip on its hold that it's had, I mean, for a hundred years or so. Okay, second thing, man, this is, this is interesting too. G7 summit set to end without an agreement for the first time in history. It will be the first time since meetings began in 1975 that the forum has failed to end a summit without an agreed statement, laying bare the deepening rift between heads of state from seven of the world's largest economies. So the heads, I mean, let's scroll down to this picture. Look at this picture right here. Look at the, all the power in this picture right now. And without them coming to agreement, without there being harmony, you know, they talk, uh, Napoleon Hill talks about this in his book, Think and Grow Rich. It talks about a mastermind talks about combining more than one mind to connect to an even greater mind. And we can now clearly see that they are losing. They're losing their connection. They're losing harmony. Very interesting. Alongside environment and trade, analysts expect Brexit, inequality, the possible reinstatement of Russia and universal taxation on digital giants to dominate proceedings. Last year, the G7 summit in Ottawa, Canada, Trump threw typically stage-managed proceedings into disarray. Very interesting stuff happening, guys, in the traditional markets, traditional government, traditional power. In my opinion, it's starting to unravel. Gold still flat on the week. Gold still flat on the week, but I just read an article that there's more demand than ever. More demand than, I think more demand since 2013 for the shiny metal. So again, traditionally as markets, as individuals start losing faith, in governments, fiat currencies or government-backed currencies, and also the equities market, the Dow Jones, the stock market, that is a government-backed Ponzi scheme. It's a Ponzi scheme, okay? People are losing faith in it, and traditionally when they lose faith in it, they go back to precious metals. I think now we're, we're in the middle of a paradigm shift where Many, many younger people, generation, Gen X, millennials, all of those different uh, generations, they're going to be getting into digital assets and perhaps some metals. Silver, same thing, just flat on the week. What are we going to do? What's the next move? Are we going to continue upward or are we going to have a little bit of a correction? Bitcoin still just riding this 100-day moving average, just riding it. Look how it's just beautifully bouncing, just bouncing off, just really riding in between these two moving averages. Very interesting stuff, okay? A, a big thing that I like to focus on is adoption. That is the name of the game is, uh, you know, I remember getting my first cell phone when I was 16 years old back in freaking 1996, 1997, okay? And now, you know, you got this thing. In fact, I got, I got two of them, okay? I got two of these things. It's, uh, it's adoption. Everybody uses one. Everybody. It's only a matter of time before everybody uses crypto digital assets, blockchain technology. And so we're so early to the game right now. And we're actually watching. If you're paying attention to this market, you're watching evolution take place. You're watching the unfoldment of a radical new technology. Swiss private bank says 400 new clients demanding crypto products. Swiss private bank Merkai uh, Bauman 
has, has, has had a deluge of 400 new clients wanting to tap its future blockchain offering since it revealed its interest in the sector. Swiss Info reported on August 22nd that the Zurich-based institution, which has $8.2 billion in assets under management but faces stiff market competition and an erosion of its margins, has opted to embrace blockchain to rejuvenate its business. So this is a perfect example. Get out. Kids. <laughs> um, uh, so this is a perfect example of a big institution adopting this new technology, this new investment opportunity in order to save its business. Bid to be the go-to private bank in Swiss crypto. In an interview with Swiss Info, Merkai uh, Bauman, CEO Stephen uh, Zwollen, said that the bank's revelation, it the, said that the bank's revel, yeah, revelation, it would be launching a crypto business already signals a dramatic reversal in fortunes, adding, in our traditional business, we usually have had we usually have to run after each client. It's rather rare for clients to just knock on our door. We suddenly had 400 people wanting to talk with us and they were exactly the kind of people we had been struggling to access for 10 years. They were typically between 30 and 40 years old, I just talked about that, very well educated and with an entrepreneurial mindset. So again, guys, as the old traditional system starts to crumble and implode on itself, okay, the, 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 the new money, because old money is dead, okay? People, I would say from 50 and up, they have, they're, they're, they're trapped in their mindset. They're trapped in their paradigm. It's hard for them to wrap their mind around this opportunity and to really see the opportunity, okay? But like we're seeing from, I would say 18 to 50, these individuals, they want digital assets. They live in a digital world. So they're going to want that. So it's all about adoption, people. Moving on, again, XRP just, I mean, we're just hanging on hanging on to this long-term support line of between 25 and 30 cents. Just absolutely incredible, incredible fundamental news this week uh, from Ripple. You know, NASDAQ launching it on their platform. And now we've got Ripple's uh, Kahina. I, I hope I pronounced that name right. Uh, Kahina Van Dyke now on board of directors at X Rapid enabled MoneyGram. So if you recall, Ripple invested, I believe it was 20 or 30 million dollars into MoneyGram, the company, the second largest money transferring remittance company in the world for a 10% stake in the company. And now they have one of their own on the board of directors. This is massive news, guys. This is something I never expected to see, but it happened. Ripple's Kahina Van Dyke is now on the board of directors at MoneyGram and has the role of an observer. All credit goes to valued XRP community member Stuart under slash XRP for this great news. Definitely a follow if you're on Twitter. So right there, look at that, that is incredible. So it appears she still does hold her position at Ripple. This seems like a highly strategic move. MoneyGram is the largest publicly known user of X Rapid, and we learned from MoneyGram CEO that in Q4 of this year, X Rapid would start making some serious impact. Ripple most likely put Kahina Van Dyke in that position to monitor the progress of their X Rapid usage, in my opinion. Can't wait for Q4 to begin. I can't wait, can't wait for that day that we're waiting for. That big green candle day that starts 
the next big bull run cycle. It is just around the corner, guys. Every day we're getting closer. Every morning when you wake up, we are one day closer to the start of the next cycle. EOS, EOS actually looks like it has, it's turning down a bit, now making lower lows. You can see that energy, it's starting to head down just a little bit. Hopefully we get a boost soon. To be honest, the entire alt market, altcoin market is just in disarray right now, just really taking a pounding over the past six weeks. Tron still just riding on this line that I drew, you know, at, at that, uh, you know, 1.7 cent mark. Um, it, it, it is, guys. I mean, it is just nobody likes seeing these uh, conditions, especially if you've been in it for a while, if you've been in it since 2017, if you've been in it since 2018, even, yeah, even 2018. I mean, I have clients that were buying at the very, very top. I actually launched a project, a big venture, uh, on March 1st, 2018. Within 48 hours, market just starts crashing. I mean, I had clients buying uh, XRP at over $3. I have a client that was buying Bitcoin at $19,000. So to be, in, to, to be in these conditions right now and to have withstood 2018 and for the most part 2019, our day is coming, guys. Our day is coming. Do your research. Do your due diligence. Okay, you've got to build up the conviction, build up your faith in your investment. I'm telling you, better days are coming. Better days hanging out on the beaches of the world are coming in the future. They've already happened. We just have to be patient. I hope you guys have a great day. I will see you on tomorrow's video. That's it.